All right, so you've decided that you want to build a Nutanix cluster on Cisco UCS. So you purchase three Cisco UCS M6 C220 all flash nodes, which are shown here in the middle of the diagram. Each node comes with a SIMC interface, which connects to your out of band management network, where the system administrator also connects their laptop. Each node also comes with two by 10 gig ethernet NICs which connect to your upstream production network. Each of these three independent nodes will come pre-installed with two things. One, the Nutanix hypervisor called AHV, which stands for Acropolis Hypervisor, and that runs directly on the hardware. This is represented by the gray box around each server node. It also comes pre-installed with Nutanix operating system called AOS, which stands for Acropolis Operating System. And this runs on the controller VM atop the hypervisor. This is represented by the light green box just above each server node. If you cable and power all of this up, then you're prepared to provision your cluster, which means you've achieved your day zero setup. The CBM runs AOS and has several capabilities and functions. It provides storage protocols or interfaces like SCSI, NFS, SMB, which enables it to A, connect to different types of storage, both local and remote, but we're going to focus on local storage only for now, and B, control all disk I.O. traffic coming from user VMs on the local node heading to disk or storage on the local node, which is represented by dotted arrows within the diagram. So I want to take a minute and point that out. Here we've got user VMs, and there's a little blue dotted uh, arrow that says VMIO. It gets intercepted by the controller VM, which then controls all storage I.O. down to your flash disks, your SSD. Okay, and it's all local. It's kept local uh, by design because that limits the latency between the user VM and the storage. Um, that doesn't mean that it's always that way, like in a failure or HA type scenario, but that's the way it is in a steady state. All right. Um, it also provides data transformation services such as deduplication, compression, and even replication to other nodes. It hosts Nutanix Foundation software, which is involved in cluster provisioning uh, or day one provisioning. And it hosts the Prism service, which is involved in cluster management or day two operations. Okay, now since it's a VM, you can run it on top of multiple different hypervisors, both on-prem, such as AHV or ESXi, and public cloud, such as AWS, Azure, or Google. This deployment model decouples the CVM operating system, remember that's AOS, and the underlying hypervisor from each other, allowing the administrator to upgrade each of them independently. Okay, so now that we've kind of got our baseline, let's talk about how to do cluster provisioning. So um, you will need to configure the three nodes into a cluster, and when you do, you'll have the option of re-imaging the nodes with an alternative or updated hypervisor and an updated operating system version, or you can skip this and upgrade everything later. First, you're going to install and run the foundation discovery applet on your laptop. You're gonna allow it to discover your nodes via your management network. And then you're going to select a node that you want to connect to, and the applet will proxy your connection to the Nutanix Foundation software running on the selected node. Okay, so if we take a closer look here, your laptop is running up here, and you're going to launch this discovery applet running on your laptop. And it is going to communicate down and discover all of these nodes here, these three nodes, one, two, and three, over this management network and it's going to feed that list of discovered nodes back to you, the user up here in your browser. You're going to select one of those nodes, and then the discovery applet is going to proxy a connection to the selected node, uh, to the foundation software running on that selected node. So in this case, it looks like uh, the user 
uh, selected node 3. That's why the discovery applet is proxying the connection to foundation down here on node 3. So in that case, your browser would get redirected over here to this controller VM and, and to the foundation software running on the controller VM on that node. Okay? All right. So now that you're connected to Nutanix Foundation software on node 3, what is it going to help you do? First, it's going to allow you to select which nodes you want to be in your Nutanix cluster. So you can select your own node, but you can also select these other two nodes that you want to be in your cluster. It's going to determine the network settings, including the IP addresses for your SIMC, your hypervisor, your controller VM, and your cluster IP. It's going to allow you to select your AOS and hypervisor images. So uh, AHV comes built into AOS, so there's nothing additional you need to upload after you've uploaded the AOS image that you want. Uh, but ESXi uh, must be uploaded separately if you want to use that hypervisor. Or you can skip this altogether, as I mentioned, right? You can go ahead and configure your cluster using the existing software, and then you can upgrade your hypervisor and your AOS images uh, after the cluster has been established. So once you've defined which nodes you want in your cluster, what the network connectivity and IP address settings should look like, and which hypervisor and AOS images you want to deploy on your cluster, then you can proceed with building your cluster. All right. So now that you've built your cluster, each controller VM now has an IP address which facilitates intercommunication amongst the CBMs running on the separate nodes and enables reachability to networked services that are running within the CBM. So the CBM IPs are shown here as little black dots and the cluster IP is shown as a little orange dot. Now, um, the PRISM service is used for cluster management, right? And it runs within each CVM, but with an elected PRISM leader that actively handles requests within the cluster. So when you point your browser up here on your laptop at the cluster IP address, which is shown here in orange, what you're really doing is you're making this HTTP request and you will hit the PRISM service running on your cluster directly via the PRISM leader. Okay, so uh, here you can see there's a PRISM service running in each of the three CVMs, which is these three CVMs down here, but the PRISM leader is the one on the far left. So when you hit this cluster IP and make this HTTP request, it's going to get redirected down here to the PRISM leader, or in this case, uh, node one over here on the left. Okay, um, this method is known as Prism Element, uh, which you'll sometimes see uh, abbreviated as PE, which uh, is used for single cluster management, and that makes sense, right? Because you're pointing your browser at a specific cluster IP that is uh, uh, unique to an individual cluster, right? But what if you have multiple clusters? So not just one of these versions, but uh, or what you're seeing here in the middle of the diagram, these three nodes built in a cluster. What if you had three more of those nodes built in a totally different cluster with a different cluster IP, and you wanted to manage them both? In that case, then you can deploy something called Prism Central, which is used for multi-cluster management. Now, in the same way that you typically deploy vCenter on top of the cluster of hosts that it manages, you can also deploy Prism Central as either one or three VMs on top of your Nutanix cluster. Okay, and that's shown down here in the lower right part of the diagram. So you'll notice up here it says Prism Central, one or three nodes, and it kind of has this double underline here. And then down here, you see multiple clusters that you're going to manage with Prism Central. You see cluster 1, cluster 2, cluster 3. And you'll notice over here, it says Prism Central VMs, and you see that double underline. So what that's indicating is that you've deployed one or multiple Prism Central VMs on cluster 1, 
and together those VMs are being used to manage cluster 1 and cluster 2 and cluster 3. Okay, so when you point your browser at the, uh, the Prism Central cluster IP, which is shown in red, then you will log into the Prism Central UI and you will use that to manage one or multiple clusters indirectly, right? Uh, you're now in the UI, and then within the UI, you're going to select a cluster that you want to manage, and essentially that's going to redirect you to this cluster IP, and then you're going to hit the Prism Leader, uh, and then you're going to be able to manage this entire cluster. Okay, so if you've deployed your cluster with the AHV hypervisor, then at this point there's nothing more for you to do. But if you've deployed your cluster with ESXi hypervisor, then you'll also deploy vCenter as a VM on your cluster. And then you'll log into vCenter, you'll add all of your ESXi hosts, right, the hypervisors on these three nodes within vCenter, and then you'll register vCenter within Prism Central. And that will allow you to do basic uh, operational tasks on your VMs from within Prism without having to go into vCenter. Okay, so, um, Prism Element and Prism Central both provide the GUI, the, the, the graphical user interface. They provide API capabilities uh, in terms of REST APIs. They provide multiple different CLIs, and they provide access to PowerShell capabilities. So all of your management capabilities run through either Prism Element for single cluster management or for Prism Central for multi-cluster management. Okay. So now that you've got your cluster deployed uh, and it is manageable either via Prism Element or Prism Central, you can expand your cluster by adding nodes to it and you can upgrade your cluster by updating either the hypervisor or the operating system or both. Uh, expansion and upgrades are all handled through the settings menu and if you have... Um, production workloads running in your user VM, shown here in blue, and you're having any kind of performance problems, then you can troubleshoot that through the VM menu. So as a summary of results from everything that we've captured here, at the end of the day, you will have taken the three independent nodes that you see in the middle, and you will have converged them into the three clustered nodes that you see at the bottom, okay? Um, so you'll notice that uh, here above the hypervisor, instead of now showing the controller VM up here, we now show it down here. The controller VM is still handling all I.O., right? We've got user VMs, we've got containers, both can run on this platform. All of their I.O. goes to the controller VM, which then sends... Uh, uh, storage I.O. to the SCSI controller and ultimately to the local disk. Uh, another thing that you'll see in this diagram down here is this light green arrow going from controller VM on node 1 to controller VM uh, on node 2 to controller VM on node 3. So all of this communication is happening over the network. Uh, this is where replication happens and the idea is that now that the controller VMs uh, are able to communicate with each other over the network, uh, what we now have is DSF, which stands for Distributed Storage Fabric, right? And, and the idea here is that it results in, it, it, it yields the same result using the local storage as would be achieved by using your hypervisor to create a data store and point it at a remote storage array. Right, All of the storage is accessible to each node. That doesn't mean that we want to provision uh, or store data for a, uh, a user VM that's running on node 1 on the disk that's within node 2. But during failure scenarios, that's better than nothing, right? So, uh, so that network connectivity there enables that. And as it says at the bottom, it says scale. So we can scale the size of our cluster, along with the compute, and memory, and disk resources inside each node, uh, we, can, we can scale our cluster linearly up until the maximum cluster size. So 
Ultimately, you wind up with this clustered platform that provides the ability to host both VMs and containers. You can do that either on-prem or in the public cloud. In fact, the nodes that are part of your cluster don't all have to be on-prem. Some of them can be on-prem, some of them can be in the public cloud, and you can use affinity or anti-affinity rules to determine where the user VMs are going to run uh, on which nodes, right? So you can uh, attach certain workload VMs to nodes running in your private data center and other workload VMs to nodes running in your public cloud provider. And then, of course, if any of those nodes fails, then the opposite, uh, the, the remaining nodes would be used to try and power up those VMs for, from an HA perspective. Okay, so you can, you can host your VMs and containers on-prem or in the public cloud or both. Uh, and you can do that with workload and licensing mobility, meaning you can move your VMs uh, across nodes within your data center or even between your data center and your public cloud without having to really do anything. It's like a standard vMotion, but from your on-prem data center to your cloud and your licensing moves with the workload. So this is a very powerful solution. Uh, and, and I believe with the management elements that we covered, both Prism Element and Prism Central, makes it relatively easy to deploy, consume, and manage. Okay, appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.